this is something I want to share with everyone as well, because a lot of people are have a fear of the unknown. And the interesting thing is the unknown is generally less scary than the known. Swasti. Hi. Lovely to see you again. Me too. How are you? Very good, thank you. Okay. Very busy, but very good. <laughs> <laughs> How was the wedding? It was amazing. Absolutely awesome. amazing. That was our first time in Mexico and we loved it. The yeah. place we're staying at was amazing. And that wedding venue was just exquisite. Was it? We were so surprised because we weren't we weren't expecting it. We just turned up, you know. We yeah. we got a shuttle thing from the uh, resort that we we're staying at, and it took us through this tiny little town, this little, tiny little village, and everything seemed so yeah. tight and squishy. And then this really <laughs> steep hill, and we were all like, nah, "We're all gonna die!" Um, and then we walked <laughs> up to this place, and was like, oh, "Okay, that was worth it." <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Oh. Yeah, it really was great. Good. So how are you doing? Um, I'm good. So my question was, so I've had this thing. It happens every year. So I watch watch myself struggle up to a point. And I don't I don't know what this what what this like how to even physically put it into words. It's like I watch myself struggle and with exams, like I don't believe that I can get to being adequately like prepared and sitting down in that exam mentally prepared. Like physically, yeah, like I might never actually get to that, like fine because there's just too much sometimes and I'll never know everything of everything but mentally mm -hmm. I don't even believe that I can get to a point of being prepared just before the exam and then like it's almost like weird because the build up to it I kind of watch myself instead of doing anything about it yeah okay ah, interesting so as you say you you watch yourself in the build up to it without doing anything but what is going on inside you? So you feel like you're not going to be prepared. And what happens then in your mind? So it's always like I am afraid of the unknown because every single like academic year, so first year, second year, now third year, like you have to figure it out again. Like you're starting from zero again because this like what they test kind of varies, which is fine. But you literally are left in the blue. And I feel like after every year, I've gone less and less support as well. So, like, mm. obviously I did, like, the thing of, you know, reaching out to whoever can help and stuff. But you actually have less contact with the uni itself because you're more in hospital all the time. I just feel like, oh, wow, I don't even know what things I need to study. <laughs> like, I don't even know what conditions I need to know. <laughs> so I said that we had, like, a meeting today with the academic advisor, and I said that to him. And he goes, well, you need to think about what a doctor would need to know. And I was like, well, that's not very helpful because I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? So, yeah, so it's just like sitting in the exam and if something comes up, which is absolutely like I have not revised for three years, well, then I don't know. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Have you watched any like YouTube videos or read any articles or anything from previous medical students on this kind of topic with these kind of challenges? It seems like everywhere I go, there's a dead end. So I did, okay. like, I asked specifically the fourth year. So, like, the year above, I was like, what did you do? What topics did you study? They gave me Good a list I of topics. But it's huge. And I was like, this is unattainable. But the thing is, I also know, I know what's important. So I've started with those. Okay. I know what's important to, like, cancer is really important, obviously. If someone has cancer, you need to know everything about it. And then there's, there'll be smaller things, like, more niche things, which I can kind of leave out. They will come up, but I can leave them out for now. So I do have like a thing. I know where I'm going, but it's also like, do I really? I could be going down a complete rabbit hole. Oh, okay. Very good. Good job. So this is a clear program right here. Just answering the logic of it. The first piece is clearly plenty of other medical students have walked this path before yeah. and have become doctors, right? So they, they must be, it must be possible. Mm. Right. And then those people also are, a, they won't all be the same type of person. There'll be a variety of personality types and learning styles and abilities and backgrounds yeah. and 
you know, how much time a person has and all of those kinds of things. And there are, it, it helps to remember that there are a lot of people who have become doctors, who've gone through this process and become doctors who have really struggled right? Yeah. They've struggled with perhaps money, you know, they've had to get another job or they've, they've not been, they've had a lot of stress, um, you know, so the reason for saying that is it means that whatever challenges you have, you will be able to get through it because yeah. they have, so it must mean that it's possible. So that helps to encourage you now. So that's the first piece. The second piece is that you, as you say, you know what's important. So you're going to prioritize that. And then there are other things that aren't as important. And that's okay. You'll get to those later, like you said. Do you think that your concerns are based on logic or is it just a fear? It's just a fear of the unknown. Because I don't want to go through all this effort and then come up with something that I don't know. <laughs> come across something that I don't know. Yes, yes. Okay. So the unknown. So this is a great topic. And this is something I want to share with everyone as well, because a lot of people are have a fear of the unknown. And the interesting thing is the unknown is generally less scary than the known. Yeah. So a fear of the unknown is generally just like an instinctive thing. And it's not based on logic or reason, because when you think about it, whatever you're experiencing right now, and in this case, it's you're not a doctor yet, yeah. right? That's the known. And the known is also that if you don't do, if you don't move forward, you're not going to become a doctor. Yeah. Now the unknown piece, which is, I don't know which questions they're going to ask me. And I don't know if I, if there's going to be things I don't know, that's not as scary as not becoming a doctor, is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the perception. So this goes for people as well who, you know, they want to improve their lives or, or their business or whatever. And, and then they go, oh, no, but if I take that step, uh, it's the unknown that scares me. And you think, well, is that really scarier than staying where you are? Yes. Mm. So, yeah. and, and the re <laughs> does that make sense? Is that a penny yeah. drop? <laughs> yeah, it was a penny drop. Yeah. yeah, it was for me the other day. Steve and I were talking about it and I'm taking credit for it. It's not mine. I was on a seminar in a kind of event, online event and the person who was doing the talk said that, and I can't remember his name, but he's the one who said, the unknown is scarier than the known. Yes. And I just thought that was such a great quote and I wrote it down. And then I, of course, thought it was mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually the truth of it. Yeah. So, you know, you could write that down and remind yourself of it whenever you feel that, but I don't know if I won't know something or I don't know what they're going to ask me. Mm -hmm. Really keep repeating and reminding yourself of it so until it really becomes knowledge that, mm -hmm. that, you, that you know. Does that make yeah. sense so far? Yes. Very good. And now let's look for the references. Okay. So, so we, we know that that's the case and we know that the logic of it is you will become a doctor. That's not in any question. That fear of the unknown. So as you think about, I may not know something that they ask me. I don't know what they're going to ask me. That feeling of the fear of the unknown. What's the first thing that pops into your mind in childhood, even if it doesn't make sense and seems random? I don't know, but I just feel like, you know, palpitating. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, okay. it's, it's like a very dark imagery. Good. Well done. Okay. So uh, let's see if we can find this a little bit easier. So I want you to picture yourself as a child, any age. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what's the expression on that little use face? Well, now my brain will put me in a dark room. <laughs> That's yeah. okay. Good. I yeah. expected that. So you're in a dark room and, and what is your impression of that dark room? How do you feel about it? First of all, um, I just feel lost and scared. Okay. So I want you to step into that scene as the adult you with that little you. So you are next to her. How does that feel? Yeah. It feels better. Good. And now neither of you know 
what's in that dark room, but you at least you're together. Does that feel yeah. better? Yes. Okay, very good. And now I want you to see if you can get that feeling of excitement because there's something wonderful in this room and exciting. Oh yeah, it's like, you know, when you play like laser tag? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, that way. Good. Like, good, yes. good, good. There we go. And so that memory, keep practicing it with that feeling of excitement. So what we want to do is, is create a link in your brain. So, so unlink the connection between the unknown and fear or danger and replace that connection with the unknown and excitement. Okay. Yes. And potential because that is the truth, really. The unknown contains potential. So if you don't know what it is, it could be amazing. Yeah. Good. And the more that we choose that perception, that the unknown is exciting and amazing, or at least has the potential for that, the better our results become because we're in that empowered state. We've got our prefrontal cortex online and we're more likely to get those results. We're more likely to be able to think strategically and make the decisions that will get. And in, in the case of your exams, you're more likely, of course, to remember the answers and to at least be able to extrapolate things if you've got your prefrontal yeah. cortex online. Yes. Yeah. Does so that make sense? sense? This makes Good. sense. But something that's coming in my head a contradiction is like in hindsight that's when I figure things out well everyone mm -hmm. does but like it seems like when I get to a bad enough position then mm -hmm. I figure it out because I feel calmer in that position like it's like that Ooh. is my safety thing so last summer when I did the reset exam in the summer like I studied throughout summer that's when I figured it out because like figured out how to study what to study because a it was in hindsight I sat through exams to get to that exam again so I knew kind of what to expect. But also I was so much calmer because I was like, I, no one else is doing this with me. Well, that's what I felt like at the time. Like no one else is sitting this exam, uh -huh. uh, like not that many people. So I felt like I'm not competing against anyone. It's just me to get through. Mm -hmm. And I felt so relaxed in that feeling, <laughs> even though that was the worst uh -huh. scenario. Interesting. Yes. And so when you are doing the exam with everybody else, everybody's doing the exam together, in what way are you competing? This is the thing, like, what did they study? How did they study? What did they do? And then yeah. obviously everyone will pick up on different things. Like okay. over the accumulation of three years, people will have different knowledge, obviously. Okay. Yes, of course. Yes. Now, let me just clarify. Is it true that, in other words, it's like a like a running race where some people will win and other people, if, if they're ahead of you, then you lose the race. Yeah. Really? Even it, if you oh, get the, the pass mark? Well, it's not supposed to be like that. Obviously I know everyone, <laughs> like it. the numbers, hundred percent of people are supposed to get through, but right. <laughs> that's what it feels like. Yeah. It's like yes, a rat race. Exactly. Yeah. That's it. Exactly. And so that's why we want to just answer the logic there first. So what is the pass mark? How much do you have to get in order to pass? Um, so the first paper is usually 60% and the second one's usually 60. 55. Yeah. Okay. So let's say 60%. So if you get 60% or let's say you get 65%, yeah. right? You've passed. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Good. And does it matter if everyone else got 80%? Is that going to yeah. make you not pass? Um, well, so the pass mark is based off how everyone else does. So it's okay. a relative pass mark. So it's usually okay. around 60%. But if everyone else got 80%, then the pass mark is 80%. I see. I see. Okay, fair enough. However, if you do pass, so you get a pass mark mm -hmm. and everyone else did better than you, yes. uh, but you still pass. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Well, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just okay. to get to that pass mark, I feel like I'm even fighting. Like, I feel like I'm in a survival state to even get to a bare minimum. Like, I don't I don't succeed <laughs> above the bare minimum here. And I don't know why. Okay. Like, I don't see why not. Yes. Okay, so let's have a look at that. Because what we want, ideally, is to get you to the point where you are excited to do the exam, you're yeah. looking forward to it and you know that you've got what it takes. Yes. And you also know that even if you don't, it'll be okay. You'll get another chance. 
yeah. or you've got other plans, that kind of thing, so that you're walking into that or, or the lead up to the exam is more of excitement and looking forward to than fear and doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. All right. Now, can you remember back to when we first started with you and mm -hmm. you were worried about you weren't getting the pass mark you needed in order to get into medical school in the first place and that you you were worried about what your pass mark would be if you would get the pass mark and you ended up with like overachieving it like yeah. a star mm -hmm. I seem to remember yeah yeah yeah. yeah, we want to get you back to that frame of mind. Now, I know this stuff is, of course, you know, what you're studying now is a lot more difficult, yeah. but it it still means that you your perception of how you will do is not accurate necessarily. Yes. Mm. Right. You, you can do better than you think you can. Yeah. Good. Okay. Is there anyone else that you know of who is also worried? Yes, but it's just like, People pretend and then people get through and it just annoys me. Like mm -hmm. literally like one, another, another person I can think of, she's always stressed out. She always gets like mm -hmm. the top mark in the year. I'm like, please mm -hmm. stop. <laughs> like genuinely. So do you see her programs? I see her programs for sure. Yeah. But so still, it doesn't matter yeah. how well she does. Yeah. She'll keep being stressed. Yes. And in a similar way, no matter how prepared you are, you will feel unprepared. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much work you do or how prepared you actually are. Yeah. Because in the same way she's stressed anyway, even though she does, she does well, you're stressed about not being prepared, even if you are prepared. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yes, makes sense. Good. And the purpose of pointing that out is for reassurance and going, mm -hmm. okay, I don't need to buy into this feeling. Just because I'm feeling like I won't be prepared doesn't mean that's true. Mm -hmm. It's a program. Okay. And so the brain is pumping those stress chemicals into the system that feel like I'm not going to be prepared regardless of the reality. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And for some people, the opposite happens. You know, there'll mm -hmm. be people who feel like, oh, no, it'll be fine. I'll I'll sail through it. And then they fail because they've yeah. got a different kind of program. Yes. Mm. OK, good. So let's get some balance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you've got the dark room. So, so go back to that dark room now with the little you. And what's the feeling in that dark room right now? It's like I never feel good enough good enough compared to others if it was just yeah. me I'd feel good enough but compared to right. everyone else yeah okay so that's a great place to start so if you were the only one doing this these exams you would feel yeah. prepared is that right <laughs> yeah yeah good. I would. good 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 excellent so that's it we wouldn't get you to there regardless of others or not and I kind of have a vague idea of what this might be but let me ask you in case I'm jumping to conclusions what comes to mind in childhood of being compared or comparing yourself or other people comparing you to someone else I don't know if we're thinking about the same thing but when my sister was born I've been working on this for like a month because <laughs> it keeps coming in drips that was oh, okay. so much comparison and now I see like how my sister is with my dad compared to how I am. Like it's actually insane. I will walk into a room, I did, my dad will start shouting. My sister walks into a room and it's just affection and love. Like it's like wow. daddy's girl. There's a, like a huge difference. Um, wow. Yeah. That is massive. Yeah, because that's life-threatening to the unconscious yeah. part of your brain. Okay, so let's change. Now, when you say you've been working on it for a while, wh where's the sticking point? Wh where have you got to with it? I just, I still feel so much anger about it because mm -hmm. I don't understand why. So I was working on, so when she was born, uh, my dad bought these like pink clothes for her and, mm -hmm. you know, like these photographs and everything. Like he was really excited about her coming. And as far as I can understand, none of that happened for me. Like that was excitement with me coming, but for like the whole thing surrounding it was just not it. Okay, good. Like the birth and everything. Yeah. Okay. And how do you know about that? So I see like, a, oh, I was thinking about this this morning, like the village was so deprived. And so I was born at home and our house was not 
because we couldn't afford a hospital. And there was a midwife right living right next to the house. So the house was like broken as well, apparently. You know, like mm-hmm. like roofing wise, like real mm-hmm. poverty. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's powerful. And your sister, I assume, was born in England. She was born in a beautiful hospital. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you know all of this because your mother told you about it or someone else told you? How do you know? Yeah, the entire generation of grandma, uncles, yeah. everyone. And I've like got this massive imagery in my head, obviously, of what I perceive it to be. Yeah. And so they've told you stories of like, oh, the house is turned, you were born at home and there was a midwife living next door. Yeah. Right. Okay. (laughs) Very good. So what we want to end up with is number one, the original story has changed, of course, but number two, and very importantly, a piece that a lot of people miss is we want to reimagine those people telling you the new story. So not just imagining the new story yourself. Yes, we want to do that, but we want to then the grandparents and the uncles and aunties and mother and father, whoever, are now telling you the new story. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why I was asking how you know about it. What we want to end up is with, of course, is you were born in a beautiful hospital in England. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in fact, an even nicer hospital than your sister. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Now, are you able to go straight to that or shall we put in some stepping stones? I can't create that. I can't create the piece with my dad. That's where I struggle. Uh, okay. So this is also where the dark imagery is like, I, yeah, I can't see the bad house go away, you know, okay. like the broken house. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's look at that. That's very interesting. So the broken house, so you got that, the dark and the broken house. And what do you think that house represents? And if you don't know, that's okay. It was just the poverty, like just how poor they were. <laughs> Yeah. And what do you you think is keeping that in your mind? In other words, what do you, because of course that's not real now. That Mm. was back then. And now it's just neurons. So as you think of that house and the poverty and all that, that's literally just nerve cells in your brain connecting. That's all that's, and chemicals. So what do you think is holding that image there? Because it's not a real thing. What would happen if you let go of it? I feel like that's where affection happened. You know, like that house, because from then on, it was just downhill. Like, oh. yeah. So that's when I was living with yes. the extended family. So that's the yes. only time I know of like good, good memories. Of course, that makes sense. And so your brain has connected that darkness and that brokenness with physical affection and with, with feeling safe. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> okay. So if you could keep the house Mm -hmm. and keep the affection and the extended family and all of that. And you could transform the house to a beautiful house. So you Mm. were still born at home, but it's a gorgeous home. And in fact, your mom had a, maybe a water birth, something like that, something really calming and lovely. Mm. And all the extended family are there and your dad is there. And we could add this. Your sister is there waiting for you and everyone's waiting for you. How would that feel? That feels calming. Yeah. 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 Good. And now if you were in that scene and you look at your dad's face, what's the expression on his face? Now it's all light and like really nice. Yeah. That was the piece. Very good. And what's everyone else doing when you are born? Your mum holds you up and they they all look at you. What happens? It's so exciting. Like this feels abundant now, you know, just because of the white light. Yes. Yes. Fantastic, Swasti. Okay. So, and just let's just make sure that your dad has pink clothes for you. (laughs) Yes, he does now. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> very good so now that's how that happened and of course you'll need to repeat that with the emotions to establish it but now let's move forward to now you all moved over to England the whole extended extended family and mm-hmm. now you're in England and so you're a little bit older and now what's the relationship with your dad well it's not perfect <laughs> yeah I don't know where the sticking point is 
Okay. I was told as a child that he was looking forward to me coming, right? So I get so excited when I can see that bath and I, you know, like whenever I see it, it's so happy, like exciting, Good. excitement on his face. But as soon as I came here, my first initial like thing of my dad was that he was working all the time. He was like working all the time, working all the time. And the first like thing I remember is him um, in his office. And I needed the bathroom <laughs> and I didn't even like, I didn't even tell him. I was like seven or eight, couldn't speak English oh. at this point. He took me to work because he needed to do work and I was also there. Yeah, I just remember like sitting there needing the bathroom and not asking him. Okay, so let's fix that. If I'm correct, we've never, we've never looked at that one before. No, no. Okay, very good. So uh, let's do a stepping stone there. How would it feel to ask him for the bathroom? You say, Dad, I need the bathroom. Okay, now it feels good. Now it feels safe, yes. Very good. Okay, so that's that. That's a stepping stone. The final memory I want you to do there is that he says to you, hey, let's take a break. Yeah. And you say, oh, yes, please, because I need the bathroom anyway. And he says, great, we'll swing by there and then we'll go and then something fun. Okay, this is good. All my memories are like coming into one now because I created like where his office is amazing and he has a slide in his office. And all of that. Now it's all combining in my head. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yay. Good job, Swasti. That's fantastic. So we have all of that. And of course, you'll practice that and you can watch the recording uh, to remind yourself. So now let's think about exams and getting prepared for the exams. And what's that like now? What's there now? It's still like a feeling of being lost, but I, I know, I feel like I can figure it out more. Good. Okay. And let's just double check on that lost feeling. So feeling like it's still a little bit of feeling of being lost. Anything come from childhood connected to that feeling? Yeah. So another thing I was working on <laughs> was that my parents would say like, go get, you know, go get this box from the fridge. Um, and they wouldn't tell you like what or where. There would be no description of any sort. And then you bring the box back and it's apparently the wrong box. And you'd get like, you know, just get shouted at for nothing. And that happened like over and over, like every single day. Yeah, okay, so I, just, so... I always felt so anxious like at those times. And then you're oh. sitting in a room and you suddenly get, you know, like a demand of some sort, like go get this, you know, like, and then you bring the wrong thing. Well, that makes perfect sense. Because now as you think about an exam, you're going to be told to get a box and you don't know what box to get. <laughs> yeah. Right. You're going to be told to answer a question and you don't know what what the answer is or what the yeah. question is going to be. Yes. That makes perfect sense. That's a very clear link there. Yeah. Excellent. And when you say you've been working on it, what have you done so far? Where have you got up to with it? I tried to create like good instructions where, you know, they spe specifically tell you where it is and what it is or like what's oh. in it, what color or whatever. I made it really obvious, like a green box. Yeah. And how does that feel? I feel like it doesn't satisfy them. Like, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So here's what I what I would suggest for stepping stones. There's a couple of stepping stones here that I think are important. The first one, I think, is that you go and you look and you, you don't know which one. So you come back and you say, I'm sorry, but I don't know which one you mean. And they go, oh, never mind. I'll get it. Okay. Can you imagine that? I feel like they always like get very angry about it. It's like, you know, there's jittery, like, that's wrong. <laughs> yes. And I can imagine that that's a thread that goes all the way through. Yeah. So let's take each parent. So start with your mum. So she tells you to go get a box from the fridge and you don't know which box to get. And she's starting to get jittery and you freeze her with your magic wand. Can you do that? Yeah, I can always do okay. that. <laughs> good good now that what's causing that jitteriness and that anger and that frustration whatever's there in her is like a dark cloud in her chest or her solar plexus can you see it mm -hmm. imagine it very yes. good and now you wave your magic wand again and whatever that darkness is it dissipates and it turns into this beautiful white light and it was just a curse she was under and you have now lifted that curse and she feels such relief mm, yes does that help yeah I can see that with both parents now good job very good Swasti and so now how do they respond when you say I'm sorry I just I don't know which one you mean can you help me 
Yeah, it's more gentle. Good, 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 good. And what we want is one of the memories, one of the stepping stones is that they go with you. Mm -hmm. They say, oh, let me come with you. I'll show you where it is. Okay. Got that feeling of you're not just expected to go off and get it on your own, even with directions. Mm -hmm. You've got, I'm getting waves of goosebumps as I'm saying this, but an adult goes with you. Okay. So you and have, you know exactly you. what. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's it. You don't have to figure anything out. Oh, uh, yeah. You forget how like scary that feeling is to a child. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Especially when there's so much else going on. There's other stresses, and the mm -hmm. father is working a lot, and the mother is uh, frightened, and you know, there's there's a lot going on. That then all of that is coloring this one task. Yeah. Because a child who feels confident and comfortable and loved and safe in the, exactly the same situation, go and get me a box from the fridge and they don't know and they come back with the wrong box. And the parent goes, oh, no, 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 that's not it. Let me show you which one it is. No problem, right? Yes. Yeah. Or the child goes, can't figure it out, comes back, says, I, sorry, I don't know. I don't know which one you mean. And there's no yeah. fear. There's no repercussions. Yeah. So you okay. want that stepping stone, those two stepping stones. The first one is that you come back and say, I don't know which one you mean. And they say, oh, okay, let me show you. The second one is that they go with you in the first place. Mm -hmm. They say, hey, I want to get this box from the fridge. Come with me. Okay. And you can see what they do. And then the final memory is that they say, oh, could you get the box from the fridge? And you go and you get the box from the fridge. And it's the right one. Yeah. Yes. All right, but you need those two stepping stones for the for the final one to work. Yeah, I'll do this. Yes. Yeah, very good. So you want to practice those, establish them with the strong feelings and all of that. Now let's think of the exams and how do you feel? Yeah, I feel good now. I feel like I have sense of direction, or if anything happens, I'm good. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so you feel comfortable moving forward. Yes, I do. Yeah. Very good. Well done, Swasti, sweetheart. I'm so, so proud of you. I know I keep saying that, but thank you. Know. you. <laughs> thank you. Good job. You're very welcome. And thank you so much for uh, for sharing all of this because it, it will help others as well. Good job. Yay. I'm so excited for you. Oh, me too. Thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome, sweetheart. Very good. Lots of love to all of you. Bye-bye now.